This is a world that I spent about a year on between the summers of 2022 and 2023. I did a world tour of this with my friends Golden Mammon and Dynamite Puzzle, uh, but I think I'm going to do my own world tour here, but a different kind of world tour, a, a lore tour, if you will. So I've made this big build here, and it's full of various story elements that I wrote into various books, and I'm going to go around, find the books, and read them out. History of Skyrock Town. Skyrock Town was established as a mining town in the 1800s near a formation of basalt pillars that they named Skyrock Mountain. The mines produced ores such as salt, quartz, and copper, leading Skyrock Town to become reasonably developed before the mine shut down. For a while, Skyrock Town remained uneventful, until there were rumors of paranormal activity in the 1940s. Skyrock Town Lab was established to research this activity. Their activities were unknown. But in the 1960s, something happened west of Skyrock Mountain that, was that has caused the area to become restricted. Some people have settled at the edge of the affected desert, planning to receive messages from the stars. After a mysterious event, the town tried to find ways to attract more people. Buildings such as restaurants and cinemas were built on. A museum of alien history is also built based on reported sightings of aliens in the area. This as well as the town being advertised as a good stargazing area, has attracted many interested in space and aliens. The amusement park, Otherland, was established nearby, as well as a casino resort at the town square. Now, despite the town's small size, it has become a popular road stop for quirky attractions of mysterious past. The Legend of Howl and Luke When Skyrock Town was new and lawless, there was an infamous bandit who was seen at the edges of town. His name was Howl and Luke. He had sandy blonde hair and bright green eyes, there are rumors that he would turn to a wolf at night, earning him the name Howlin. Howlin Luke pulled off notable heists on the rich, often taking native artifacts that didn't belong to them in order to return them to their people. Luke was regarded both as a hero but also as someone to be feared, since he would also take whatever he found useful. Whenever Luke entered a gun duel, everyone who, was tr who has tried to shoot him always found their bullet missing its target, no matter how well it was shot. It seemed that Luke would shift away from the bullet in a blink, as if he were always there. How Luke would like to boast of his accomplishments to his fellow bandits in the form of colorful tales and songs. Ever since, these tales have been told of by the people of Skyrock Town. The desert west of Skyrock Town is considered taboo for many reasons. One certainty is that this part of the desert was the location of a major battle in the war. Some suspect that our military found a strange meteorite and used it to power their superweapon. Unfortunately, the weapon exploded in the middle of the battlefield, destroying both sides of the conflict. Outsiders of the town, who claim to visit the Western Desert, say that the desert was warped into a sort of alien landscape. These outsiders claim that if one focuses their mind, surrounded by various materials from this desert, they can attract the attention of alien beings and gain their wisdom. Or maybe they are just drug-induced visions. Of the many alien sightings around Skyrock Town, perhaps the most interesting is the Observatory. The Observatory can sometimes be seen floating above Skyrock Mountain. The strange alien building is said to be home to the Observer, or the Space Prince. People say different things about the Space Prince. Some say he is the prince of a destroyed alien civilization, and he now resides above Earth, looking to the stars in his tower. Other tales say he is an adept warrior, and wheels a spear tipped with the symbol, an eight-pointed star with an eye on it. No one is sure whether he uses this for self-defense or to start fights. Some also say that the Space Prince is the cause of some strange growths under Skyrock Mountain. It's unclear the effect these growths have on the Earth, or if they're more than tales. Skyrock Town is importing increasing cases of missing people. Many suspect that it is to do with the star cult that operates southwest of the town. They speak of a figure called the Observer, who they seem to see as some sort of great wanderer from space. However, from the Watchtower, I have spotted something in the distance. It looks like a massive mechanical beetle the size of a town, far into the desert. I suspect this may be where the missing people are ending up, though I have not gained the courage to venture over there. Even if the Observer does exist, from the tales, he doesn't strike me as the kidnapping type. It seems like the cultists are still trying to get his attention. Welcome to the crossroads, the heart of the underground kingdom of Silica. Find what you seek under the sand. West are the Skyrock Mines and Glass Lake. South is Lycan Marsh. Mammon and Co. is a prospering and fast-growing business based in the town of Glass Lake. Come visit the attraction of Sam's Night Ride. 
Additionally, we are always looking for more employees. Come over and build a beautiful life. Whoops, turn the page. I can't just leave it empty. Though they are called the Skyrock Mines, there are no longer mining operations in these tunnels. The humans use them until they believe they found alien visitors in the mines. Now these mines are used by the people of Silica as a path network, as an alternative to the Dripstone Pass or the Crossroads. These tunnels connect to the Root Village on the northwest, the Crossroads on the northeast, Lycan Marsh on the southeast, and Mammon Estate on the southwest. Glass Lake Town was once a small village on the shores of Glass Lake. They used simple tools like these when the town was young. After some time, Glass Lake became skilled in shipbuilding and navigating underground rivers and aquifers. It became a trade center connected to places such as Root Village, Lycan Marsh, and the other settlements in Silica. To defend Glass Lake from threats such as pirates and thieves, Glass Lake made weapons and armor such as these to keep the town and traders safe. After some time, Glass Lake Town became rich for, from trade routes. Rich merchants would decorate their homes with furniture such as these, and nobles had ornate jewelry such as the ones in the left room. The Mammon family has been a successful line of merchants for a long time, but Glamorous Mammon is the most notable. Glamorous Mammon has always had charisma. He began as a successful salesman, but eventually moved on from that. Glamorous Mammon became famous from his show, Mammon News Broadcast, a show still going today that covers the world events of a comedy angle and guests. Glamorous Mammon earned the nickname Glamon from his distinct fashion sense and charm. Now they say he has the charm of an anti-hero, but when he gained ownership of the family company, he treated the employees well. Mammon and Co. has been selling computer-based technology for a while, but Glamon pushed it further by manufacturing robots. Glamon has always been fascinated by sci-fi. Mammon and Co. manufactures robots for domestic use, but also for the military defense. Glamon also produces a popular group of movies, the Sam movies. These movies revolved around a cool biker with knightly abilities who fights evil with his friends. Sam is known for his sunglasses, hair, motorcycle, and sparks. Mammon Co. is responsible for various attractions in Glass Lake, such as Sam's Night Ride and the Arcade. Sam's Night Ride also has versions in other towns such as Axolotl Town. The company also owns a casino resort in the human town of Skyrock Town. Glamon's lower body is that of a snake, though it can magically swap that of a set of robot legs. Mammon also disguises himself with it when interacting with humans on the surface. Kids these days only use their smartphones to call each other. Now the landline phones at home seldom ring. So in the Star Trek show, there's a spaceship made of circular hallways. In the show, there's a character called Spock. Spock is a Vulcan, and Vulcans can communicate with other people by putting their hands on each other's heads. When Spock does this, it is a meld in rings. There's a demon named Melvin. Now Melvin really enjoys food in the evening, so the best way to summon this demon is with a meld in ring. Imagine, if you will, a world with ten bell towers, each one in separate time zone. Each bell tower rings at noon, but only one rings at a time since they are all in different time zones. One day, nine more suns appear above each bell tower. At that time, all ten ring. What if, in Lord of the Rings, both Sauron's and the Ring race rings were destroyed, so only three elves and seven dwarves have rings? They decide to keep them in a museum. One day, Gollum Pack comes back from the grave and takes all ten rings. You know when there's a bad weather outside, so you go into your small private room, but then the roof gets destroyed? There's a Spanish saying that calls that an El Den Rain. You know when there's a tribe of barbarians coming to kill you, so you go into your small private room, but then the barbarians come into the room anyway? That's called an El Den Raid. You know when how you when you die you just want to spend your last moments in a small private room, so then you die but your spirit comes back into the room? You become an El Den Wraith. Do you want to be a part of the family that brought Sam to the world? Do you want to be a part of the family that makes cutting edge technology? Do you want some glamour in your life? And apply now to one of many job opportunities at Mammon Inc. Co. Don't settle for being a pawn of a warmongering artificial mammon with a false sense of godliness. That's like SSM. You don't want to work for SSM. You want to work for Mammon Inc. Co. 
A once secret government operation that was Operation Beyond once worked in the now abandoned northern sector of the lab. After their skulk bomb irradiated the western desert of Skyrock Mountain, Operation Beyond was revealed to the people, and they demanded it to end, since the skulk power is unstable and dangerous. After that, the lab was abandoned and came to use again in order to research how skulk works, how it transformed the desert, and how to remove it. Reports of skulk corruption. Transformation of the desert west of Skyrock Mountain. Growth of Skulk in Skyrock Town sewers. Growth of Skulk in Skyrock Town power plant. Large growths of Skulk in cave under the Skyrock Mountain. How can Skulk be removed? Our research has shown that Skulk doesn't grow in sunlight or in similar types of light, unless it is near water or large, large amounts of electricity. While its spread can be prevented, it seems difficult to remove. The only way to remove Skulk is to remove what it is growing on which requires a lot of work. Efforts to clear it with certain types of radiation have been unsuccessful or dangerous. However, in the Skulk Caves, we have occasionally seen neat parts of the Skulk removed while we're gone. This may be connected to what seems like a door in the caves that we haven't figured out how to open. Someone could be harvesting it. Directly above Skyrock Mountain seems to be a blind spot for our satellites. It's as if something is there, but none of our machines can tell what is there. There are theories of an alien person called the Observer who resides there with cloaking technology. Maybe the Observer is also harvesting the Skulk. Our efforts to clear the Skulk have taken us in strange, even unscientific directions. There are rumors that people camping on the edge of the warp desert have figured out how to receive signals from what people call the Observer. We are hoping that we could consult these people and receive our own signals. Maybe these signals could contain information on how the Observer harvests Skulk. It seems that the Skulk has special signal receiving and sending properties. The people at the edge of the warp desert seem to have found out how to take stabilized Skulk crystals and tune them to the frequencies of the theoretical observer systems. More research is required to find out how to use the Skulk crystals and use them to receive the information we need. We are wondering if the Cone Town Lab has any records of Skulk. They haven't reported any, but it could prove that the alien life we are dealing with is separate from what Cone Town has encountered. Lattice Skulk. Lattice Skulk is a highly refined version of Skulk. Its structure allows it to contain a large amount of energy and releases a lot of power at once. A chunk of Lattice Skulk was used in the Skulk Bomb and allow it to warp the desert. Additionally, the Lattice Skulk seems to have special teleportation-related abilities. It may be able to open up portals in space and time, as well as teleport itself when given a proper signal. One property of Skulk is that it can be teleported through other samples of Skulk with enough power. We can use this to take a sample of Lyas Skull from the Skyrim Town Lab to hopefully stop the Skull experiments in the underground. We don't even need to go into the lab to get it, we just need the coordinates of the crystal, achievable by a simple espionage mission. The perfect heist. Update. Our computers have located the exact coordinates of Lyas Skull, and it's now in our lab. We don't want it here long, in case it's dangerous, so we will sell it to someone else. Update 2. The Skull Crystal has been sold for a spooky outlet that receive stable Skulk energy from an outside location. With energy to, from the Skulk being sent to us from an outside location, we have made this, the Glamour Machine. It is modeled after the SSM Coolness Machine, but improved in the same way as SSM's machine. It taps into the power of the fourth dimension, it uses the admiration that people have for CEO Man as kept in the fourth dimension, and uses it to warp our own plane by adding the power of the images and memories people love have the real one. Maybe with this power, and we can stop the rumored derpy mammoth. With a mix of magic and technology, we have discovered a way to replace the lower half of mammoth with bionic legs to make it more beautiful. Ever since then, they are kept here most of the time for maintenance. Greetings, fellow movie connoisseur. I would like to request your alliance in a war. The cult of derpy mammoth has threatened war on my company since I acquired the derpy mammoth head. I have many funds and technology, but I lack a formidable army like yours. I offer you this gift. Among them is the head of the statue of the Derpy Mammon acquired from their temple. It is yours to do if that's your wish. If you are interested in my offer, contact me. Then meet me in my office and we can discuss. Glamorous Memories. If you want to get to the crystal, you'll have to get through me. I recommend you get ready first, but it will only take, make you take long to fall if we come to a fight. If you want to go through the trials of the temple, I may not be able to prevent you, but I will be waiting for you at the top. In my dreams, I am brought to this place. It is a memory of when I tried to become a god. I was once a star, a hero in my fabricated legends. 
Maybe I was once a real hero, but I don't remember anymore. I do, not, I do know that I started losing ideas, so I tried to define myself as the cool one. My ego grew massively, and I wouldn't accept any sentiment that I wasn't cool or perfect. I made this museum to try to tell people how cool I was. That was really a front for a cult, where I would kidnap visitors at the museum and brainwash them to worshipping me. My poor brother Wolfram 7 was the first to be transformed. With the power of worship, I started making a machine that would take that power and give me an omnipotent abilities. Before I achieved this, the one called Sam came and thwarted my plans. Sam was a star created by Mammon of Mammon and Co. His popularity rose as mine dwindled, with the appeal that he is really cool, without having to say he is cool. Mammon probably sent him to destroy me and make Sam even more popular. At the time, I thought Sam was a worm, but I have come to appreciate what he has done. Reflecting on the old days, I realize how crazy I've become. Unfortunately, I am only aware of this in this strange fourth dimension that I visit in my dreams. When I am awake, I am unaware of my history. I am kept in paradise hidden in the walls of castle while I still believe I am cool, and Sam is not. Only here do I know the truth. Someday, I would like to escape with my new knowledge, leave the paradise, and right my wrongs. Maybe I could rightfully earn the title of cool. So much has happened. I think I'll call the reason events the Mammon Wars. I became suspicious of a derpy Mammon cult, and a giant Vulcan fortress ruled by a robot robotic Mammon. At the same time, I was suspicious of experiments in the Skyrock Town lab. I managed to take the lab's gladiscope, hoping it would stop their experiments, but I didn't want it either. I put it for sale on Janus bought it, and gave me access to stable Skulk energy. I decided to use Skulk Energy to make a machine that would give me powers from those who admire me, in case the Derby Mammon situation got severe. It turned out that Janus leads the cult and is gathering crystals to summon Derby Mammon. The last Skulk was one of them. Hoping to weaken the workforce of the cult in Spanwalker, the Walking cult Fortress, I attempted to hire workers from them, which wasn't successful. Janus took my statue in front of the resort, I retaliated by taking her Derby Mammon face. Janice threatened to war if I didn't return the face, so I gave the face as a gift to God of the Man, but the Spanwalker to join me in stopping the cult. He accepted, and so the war had started. Drones sought remotely detonated bombs at the resort, but my laser defenses present prevented some of them. I sent drills to try to take down the pillars that would hold the summoning crystals in the cult. The solar statue also activated its laser defenses. I also sent out Glam Sandbot 80,000 to prevent more drones from reaching the resort. Then, the resort, my estate, and Mammon and Co. went to the lockdown. Janice acquired a water crystal from the pyre. I found out that the life crystal was in the temple near the cult. I sent Sam to defend the life crystal, but Janice had powerful elixirs and a powerful sword, and got the life crystals as well. All that was left was a fire crystal, which is powered the Spanwalker. I helped defend the Spanwalker, attack them, and some god of man that sent his guards, and even fought Janice himself. Even Spanwalker had low power because Janice defeated the god and got the fire crystal. As a last resort, I activated my machine so I could destroy the crystals and stop the ritual. And my machine suddenly stopped working. I found that out that SSM broke the machine. SSM was once a delusional movie star who tried to become a god in a similar way I did before Sam stopped him. But something must have changed with him since he, was, he has decided no one should have that power. At the time, I was furious at this, but I realized he stopped me so I wouldn't become like him. I had to find another way to stop Derpy Man. Later, we had a meeting, and Janice offered to help us. I concluded she wasn't deceiving us, so I let her help. Her drones carried cameras and robots to Derpy Mammon, who was invading the Spanwalker. He was truly terrifying. Sam, SSM, Gotham for Mammon, and pirates also joined the fight. I tried broadcasting the fight on Mammon News Broadcast to the cults to try to weaken their power of their belief in the demon. Derpy Mammon unleashed Elisha's minions, and we fought them while Janice entered Derpy Mammon through the wound in his neck. Inside, Janice coated her sword of gold so I could pass through the shield on Derpy Mammon's head and stab his cult, destroying him. There was a great flash of light, and Derpy Mammon, as well as his minions, were gone, but Janice was also gone. She must have died in the light. Janice did start this all, but she also stopped Derpy Mammon in the end. She was once a villain, but died a hero. I think that's how she should be remembered. A villain who, with a change of heart, became a hero and sacrificed herself to stop the mistakes she made. 
So much has happened that I'm going to take a vacation now. I'll take some time to travel the world and enjoy some peace before returning to normal. I need some time to process things. Glamorous Mammon. Since Glamorous left for vacation, the company's not been doing much. Mammon's VP has taken temporary control of the company to keep it functioning. I think I'll also take a break. I'll probably ride around on the motorcycle for a while and do whatever I feel like in the moment. Maybe we'll try exploring the warp desert. It's always been a mystery, but intriguing to me. Recent events have been difficult for me to fully process. My feet at the hands of Janus, who brought Derby Man into the world but later saved it? It's a lot to comprehend. The way she was defeated the way she defeated Derby Man was amazing. I'll remember her for that forever. She had quite a skill with that sword, Stellaris. I think that's all I will write for now. Sam. It's been quite a journey, but I think I am free of my old ways. After escaping my prison of denial, I stopped Glamorous Mammon from making himself a god like I once tried to. His intentions were good, but I knew someday it would get to his head. We were able to destroy the ancient evil Derpy Mammon in a different way. Janice thrust her sword into Derpy Mammon's head, the same Janice who summoned the demon. I am proud of her sacrifice. I will remember her as a hero. I am now living at the edge of Skyrock Town, in a desert camp among the stargazers. I am helping them however I can, while I try to build a new name for myself. Maybe someday I will be able to see again, without going back to my old ways. There's something special about this place. The stars show themselves, even in my covered eyes. Perhaps they can lead the way to the new me. Maybe if I find out who I really am, I won't go back to what I was before. Meanwhile, I occasionally make my way to the cult of Derpy Mammon and try to rehabilitate them. Now they seem to worship Glamorous Mammon and his Mammon news broadcasts. It's an improvement, I suppose. West of and under Skyrock Mountain has growths of an alien substance that we are calling Skulk. It appears to grow like a plant or fungus, but we don't know if it is either of those th or like anything else on Earth. Some testing is required. Test results. Our base sample consists of a set of amount of Skulk under a light that simulates, that simulates sunlight. No growth is observed. Sample 2 removes the light. The Skulk seems to thrive. Sample 3 includes a basin of water. The skulk seems to grow into it. Sample 4 includes an electric wire. The skulk seems to grow towards and around the wire and absorb its energy. It seems like skulk can absorb and expel great amounts of energy and thrives in darkness and or water. Evidence suggests that the explosion west of the mountain was caused by concentrated amounts of skulk, which resulted in the mutation of nearby flora and minerals. Signals from the most recent tests. Check out the smiley face. Since the destruction of my planet, I have been wandering the galaxy alone. The only hope I have is the terraforming core, which is charged by energy from Skulk. The core should have enough power. I just need to find a sufficient planet and build a terraforming machine there. I lost it. I lost the core. The Skulk is known to have a sort of hive mind communication. I should have known that the Skulk energy in the core would interfere with my Skulk engines at high levels. In panic, I expelled it from my ship, but I don't know where it is now. What I could probably do is make a skulk tracking device and wait for a signal from the skulk energy of the core, if any life form is even manages to trigger a signal. After many years, there has been finally been a signal. It led me to a planet of similar size orbit and rotation cycle of my own. The planet seems pretty geographically and biologically different from my own, except for a small part in an arid area of the planet. Much of the planet seems to be covered by a civilization which has only started early versions of space exploration in my lifetime. Their aging seems rapidly accelerated from my own, probably about ten times faster. Some of them in this arid area managed to trigger a signal in the skulk. My core seems to have crashed on the planet shortly after I lost it, and it seems to have been since moved from its crash site and put into a machine that at some point exploded. The core was destroyed with it. I could recreate the core based on my analysis, but it would take a while to recharge. Some of the caves below the desert have some skulk growing, which probably spread from the core over several decades. I will cultivate this area, so I may need to grow more skulk on the plant to get enough quickly. I'll set up an outpost above a nearby mountain within a sort of cloaking field triggered by the skulk energy. When this core is recreated and charged, then I can turn this plant into the one like the one I grew up on. Only few know that Skyrock Town Lab is a friend for continuing the efforts of Operation Beyond. 
after the warping, the civilian population demanded Operation Beyond to end. However, he is still continuing its efforts to harness the power still. Only the highest ranking officials know of this. Everyone else believes that this lab only goes as far as researching what Skull is, but our goal is to research what Skull can do. We've already discovered how much a blast of concentrated Skull energy can change an environment. That is what caused the warping that led us to war. Imagine the other possibilities of, tr of transformation of power. The factory of Operation Beyond has broken down with the risk that soon we will make use of it again to bring about the Skull Revolution and reveal it to the people. Control over the Skulk brain stays stable, despite its growing consciousness and awareness. We are aware of the danger that could come with the brain forming the hive of the final sort of artifacts and gaining control of the lab. But control over the brain is staying, and will stay steady. To make a machine that removes the Skulk, collect the following Crystal lens buried in stranded ship, bone of corpse in deep forsaken tunnels. Alloy lost in molten pools below power plants. Core of automaton preserved in history. A bandit's prized gem in cliffs of stone pillars. Essence of day star. Put them together in a lab in the stars. Activate in the core of transformation. Then the skulk can be removed. Lost spyglass lore. Made by the glass workers of Glass Lake. The spyglass contains a lens with an ideal shape to focus skulk removing energy. Lycan Marsh may have once been a significant port of Silica. It seems the waters have changed, causing this boat to become stranded in sand. Now the frog people live in somewhat isolated here. Mammon Co. Robot Core Lore. This core will work well for powering the skulk removing machine. This early rear model happens to have the specific requirements to power a skulk removing machine. Glamorous Mammon likely had no intentions for this, it's just coincidental. Mammon Co. reserves the right to ownership of any machine made in the suit with this core. Mirage Gem, Gem Lore. This gem may have once belonged to Howlin' Luke himself, and now it has found itself in obscure places. It should be able to filter the proper wavelengths of sunlight needed to remove Skulk. Howlin' Luke may have once had a hideout in what is now a warped landscape. His descendants gained the gem, but the warp thing may have caused the western werewolves and their artifacts to scatter. The Western Royals prized their oddities, and this may have been the most prized of them. Alien Bone Shard Lore The shard of an alien long dead that has haunted the Skyrock mines for many years contains DNA samples for proteins that can break down skull. Echoes from the fourth dimension tell you that this bone shard once belonged to a member of the race of Skulkivores, consumed and digested skull to live. The observers race to grow from the skull planet to harness skull energy for themselves. In revenge, the Skulk Force entered a war of the Observer's Empire, and succeeded in eradicating the Observer's race and planet. Somehow, one Skulk of War found their way to Earth, and transformed some of the mines. Ingot of Meteorite Lore This alloy made from a special meteorite makes for a good casing for a Skulk removing machine. The Skyrock Town Lab may have developed this alloy from alien elements from a meteorite. Since the change of operation in the lab, has somehow found itself in nearby caves. Wandering through the transformed desert of Earth, I found a lonely-looking transit station. I boarded the vehicle and exited to find myself in a strange dreamscape. After wandering through this shattered surreal world, I found a familiar sight. It seemed like my childhood house on a floating rock, the one I grew up in before I left for war, when I became a captain but my planet was destroyed. For a moment, I stayed in this house, bathing in nostalgia I can't otherwise return to. Then struck me that this is only a faded replica of my memory. I can't stay here. I need to bring my home back in the physical world. The Observer. A young man spends hours each day behind the telescope, exploring the stars and planets through the lens. There are so many worlds out there, but they seem especially special from the view of this one. A student works on his latest project. He's been working on a robot companion for a while. The core of the robot has been giving him trouble, but the work is satisfying. A man is taking a journey on his world. He explores the crystal dunes with many sparkling purple stars in the sands. One gem stands out, a green crystal. He looks into the crystal and sees many scenes in the facets of shifting light. A prodigious captain soars for the stars in a ship. He defends his world from rebels. One of their bones lies as a trophy in his quarters. A boy watches the sky from a field on his planet. Meteors fly in immense numbers overhead. Since then, he has always wondered where the meteors go.
I have given up on trying to terraform this planet called Earth. I don't feel like I need to anymore. God, for Mammon, Janice, and Sam fought to stop me, and during the fight, I started remembering my planet again. I spent so much time in the void of space and Earth that I, that I had forgotten much of my planet, but now the memories have come back to me. I rediscovered my desire to explore a world different from my own. It seems silly that I would terraform this one. S something about my reawakened memories seems to have brought peace to my grief. I still miss my planet, but now I'm looking forward to what else the universe has to offer. Shortly after the fight, I helped Sam and her man and the gents clear the skull I have been cultivating on this world. While doing this, someone approached me. He went by SSM. Something about it felt like an echo of a dream. Something I had been thinking about since the battle was where I belong. For so long, the answer had been to bring back my planet, but now I'm unsure. I much as wander. SSM said he had a similar experience. Apparently, he once had delusions of godhood. One day, he learned the error of his ways. However, after this change, SSM struggled finding his new purpose in the world. Now he has settled into being a sage, a medium for the stars. Interestingly enough, it was when he helped stop my operation by asking the stars for guidance that he became settled in his current position. Oh, I hope to follow a similar journey to SSM, from misguided to a rebuilt hero. I don't think becoming a sage is my path. I could be an explorer like I always wanted to be as a kid. But I want to do something that will make the world better. Something I'm keeping an eye on is Emperor Man. Ever since defeating me, he seemed more irritable than before. I fear what would happen considering his walking fortress. Recently, there's been an outbreak of skull confection in the lab. It turns out that those in charge of the lab have been keeping secrets. We thought we were trying to find ways to remove the skull, but we've actually been trying to harness it. The restricted storage of the lab held many skulk enhanced tools and weapons, like what the lab made decades ago, before we thought it had a change of management. One thing in storage was a brain made of skulk, perhaps to try to make an advanced AI. The brain formed a hive mind of the skulk in the lab, causing the infection. We all left and came back later to all the skulk being cleared. The government has discontinued operations in the lab for now, since the public has learned of this lab's secrets. If this lab is ever in operation again, it will be closely monitored by the government. After the whole observer situation, I think I know where my new place in life is. Helping Sam, Janice, and Emperor Mam to stop the observer gave me a new meaning. I speak with the stars and use them to help people. I think I have a new name now. I am no longer your Super Scratch Man. I am now Star Speaker Man. I tried taking off my blindfold with Sam standing by in case my old self reawakened, but he didn't. Now I see through the eyes of Star Speaker Man for the first time. I still used a blindfold to speak to the stars, but now I can see Skyrock Town. It's a humble but quirky and charming town. Skyrock Mountain is magnificent, and the warp desert is a real and beautiful sight. I won't let myself get consumed by my new purpose. Even though it is a more normal, fulfilling one, I'll take plenty of time to garden, star stargaze, or explore. Maybe I'll explore with the Observer, both seeing the world for new eyes. So it turns out Janice didn't die, but she lived a life and future where the Earth was transformed by the Observer. She came back old and helped us stop the Observer's plan. Janice's supposed death was hard to process, but her alternate timeline adventures made it even harder. I think I'll just be happy that Janice is back. Apparently, now that we've stopped the Observer and the future has shaped with Janice, younger Janice may come back since that timeline doesn't happen. Again, I don't fully understand what's going on, but I'm glad Janice isn't dead. The emptiness I felt after I thought Janice died is gone. Now as the seven the observer are probably going to go off somewhere. Mr. Man was still on vacation. I don't really have any movie deals or anything coming up, so I might just take a trip somewhere. Maybe I'll meet some old friends. And that, I believe, is all the is all the lore here I have for my story on Skyrock Town. Hope you enjoyed this sort of chill solo story time I did. And now you know more about the story of, of this build here.